I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to the Rambo Reviews. And of course, this time I'm talking about Rambo 3. And actually... Nah, I can't take that off. Fuck it. That's the picture right there is for Rambo 3. It's with Rambo, with his bow and arrow, with C-14 explosive arrows. There's a bunch of the Rebels and a helicopter really good picture that you know I have a camera why don't I just do this there it is I always enjoy that picture now see my crotch nah. Ramble 3 has for the longest time well to this day has always been called the weakest Rambo film the film came out, I think at the time it was the most expensive film made, and it didn't do that well. It cost 60-some million and only made like 50-some million in the U.S. Then it made like an, a total of 180 million worldwide. Which, considering this was this film cost more, and you know, Ramble 2 made like 300 million or so worldwide. And it made like 150 million in the U.S. and it was a big disappointment. It was a flop. I know it was a case of bad timing as well because in Ramble Three, the villains are the Russians, and the whole plot is the Russians in Afghanistan. Colonel Troutman asks Ramble for help. Rambo doesn't want, doesn't, you know, he's like, my war is over. But then when his friend is taken, he goes in there for a rescue mission. And for, what was it, 10 years, Russia was having this big battle in Afghanistan. So that's why they based the film on that. But then by the time they released Ramble 3 in 1988, we were friends with Russia, and uh, the Cold War was pretty much over. Gorbachev was, you know, kissing, like, Nancy Reagan. Not in the mouth, but... Although, that'd be pretty funny. But, I don't know, maybe he did. Maybe secretly, who knows? <laughs> like, false information. What's funny about this is, this film, Ramble 3, I didn't even realize this until now, this came out on my birthday in 1988. May 25th, 1988, this film came out. No wonder I have a soft spot for this. That's not the only reason, because I just found out now, but... Wow, this came out on my birthday, May 25th of 1988. All right, I can say, to you know, my birthday is the day Ramble 3 came out. Of course, I was only three years old, so I wouldn't have been able to see it in the theater, and even if I did, I wouldn't remember anything. But, yeah, it came out when we were pretty much friends with Russia now and then you have a movie where we're battling the Russians so it got some bad publicity it got some bad <laughs> put downs and which is too bad because I've always enjoyed Ramble 3 I'll say that right now I love Ramble 3 I've never hated Ramble 3 it's actually my second favorite because Ramble 2 and 3 I grew up with the most I still love First Blood I love Ramble 4 and, again, 
Of course, it makes sense. I'm Ramble Wrath for Life. Uh, obviously, you know I'm a big Ramble fan. But Ramble 2 and 3 are the ones I grew up with the most. Ramble for Split Part 2 is my all-time favorite Ramble film. Ramble 3... Again, it's more of the superhero Rambo and less of the realistic. I think that's another reason why people are not a fan of the film. Well, they're not a fan for a couple of reasons. One, the the politics behind it, which I'll get into. Two, they feel the film is boring. I don't think the film is boring. I will admit this one little part that's a little slow. But other than that, I still think you have a lot of really well done practical action sequences. Uh... I think if you're looking for an action film, it delivers the goods on that. I let's see. Some say it's boring. Some don't like the politics. Uh, I know some didn't like the little bit of humor Rambo throw threw in, but I disagree wholeheartedly with that. It's not like he was doing a fucking stand-up shit, you know. It, the little bits of dialogue he had, I thought it made sense because it was his character actually growing. His character was not the absolute same that he was in First Blood. And yeah, it's not like he was having a fucking comedy act with a goddamn microphone. You're drinking Stein! But, Ramble 3... I'm trying to figure out where, what's the best way to start this off. Well, I already started off. I know at one time, Russell Mulcahy was actually going to direct this. Russell Mulcahy from Highlander. But then, I think it was about two weeks, and Stallone and him had disagreements, creative creative differences. I know there's a Q&A that Stallone did with Ain't a Cool News, and someone was asking about it. And Stallone said about, there was this thing where he wanted, you know, soldiers. And when he got there, Russell Mulcahy had hired all these, like, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, pretty boys... And Stallone's like, what the hell's the deal with this? Why did you hire this? So they had, like, creative differences. So Russell Mulcahy left. And then you had this guy, Peter McDonald, who directed the film. I thought Peter McDonald did not do that bad of a job. Now, Peter McDonald, he did go on to direct Mo Money, <laughs> Never Ending Story 3, Legionnaire, so really not that great of a track record. But I think he was a second unit director on Rambo 2. He was a set tier producer, second unit director in Kano and Cash. Cinematographer on Solar Babies, Hamburger Hill. Says here, I started it without any preparation. Because Russell Mulcahy left after two weeks, so I came into it totally ill-prepared. I was directing the second unit on the film. Literally the day before I left the marriage to start Rainbow 3, I'd finished photographing a film called Shag. I came to Israel and I, thinking I was going to do a second unit, which I could slowly get into. And within a week or two, I was directing one of the most expensive films ever made. <laughs> so, you know what? Peter McDonald, if somehow that guy watches this, I think you did a pretty damn good job considering if it was that last minute I've seen people who take preparation to the 10th power and they've made shittier films this to me is not a shitty film and that guy must have had a lot of pressure so much pressure I spilled my soda <laughs> uh shit well that was a bit of excitement I spilled my fucking soda <laughs> again so excited talking about Rainbow 3 shit but, um, anyway, I was saying, I was sort of saying, Hey, Peter McDonald, you did a good job, and let me spill my soda for my homie, fucking Peter McDonald. Uh, but yeah, I thought for, god damn it. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway, I thought Peter McDonald did a pretty good job considering that. And the film... Let me just go into the film. The film, it's Rambo at the beginning of the film. He It's in Thailand. And he's having this big uh, stick fight with this other guy. And I thought it was a pretty well done stick fight. And Stallone looks like a beast in this. He's hugely muscled up. Big long hair. 
Uh, Jerry Goldsmith once again returns to do the music. Of the three films, is probably my least favorite of... I still like the score, but of the three Rambo films he did, I would say this is my least favorite. I'm also not a fan of the song at the end. He ain't heavy, my brother. Where the fuck that song is. I mean, I can admit, there are some problems with this film. But I'll get into that. <clears throat> but I, I still like the score, but I would say, again, it's my least favorite of the three Rambo films Jerry Goldsmith did. I just say I like the score to Rambo 4 more than Rambo 3 score. So I just say, you know, it's my least favorite of all the Rambo scores. But I still like it. I still like it alright. I mean, Stone does really good, you know, stick fight. Gets his ass kicked, but then beats the guy's ass. And is ready to do something, but stops. The high tails it. Richard Trent is there. Back is Colonel Troutman. Trying to talk to Rambo. Rambo doesn't hear him. And pretty much, you also have Kurtwood Smith from RoboCop, among other stuff, there. And they find Rambo at this temple where he's with these Buddhists. He just wants to get away. They let him stay there if he fixes some stuff. Makes a little bit of money on the stick fight, but then gives it to the monks. Because he just wants out of there. And Troutman asks, hey, you know, I got this mission. Here's Afghanistan. And it is a weird thing, I will admit watching this film and how things have changed because Kerwood Smith says a line most people probably can't find Afghanistan on the map and I'm like ask that today because pretty much it's Rambo doesn't want to because you know he says this war is over Troutman comes in and says you know when you don't come full circle and this kind of stuff is what Stallone does again in Rambo 4. It seems like Stallone kind of repeated stuff in this for Rambo 4. The whole, when you don't come full circle. Because it's Rambo wanting to not do anything with it. Then someone is taken. He goes in for a rescue mission. And or gets full circle. And at the end you think he's full circle. It's kind of like what happens in Rambo 4. It's almost like Rambo 4 is kind of like his do-over Rambo 3 in a way. But yeah, Rambo 3 still exists. Which I'll get to that when I talk about Rambo 4. But Troutman says, hey, you want to go full circle, this and that. And Rambo says, I, you know, I'm sorry, but it's got to end for me sometime. Troutman goes in, gets his ass captured. Kerwin Smith comes in and goes, he's been captured. Stallone says, let me go in. He goes to Afghanistan. <clears throat> gets a guide. I will admit, by the time he gets there to when the next action scene happens, it's about 20 minutes. It's not not really that exciting. Because either Troutman being tortured by this bad guy, which this bad guy, I can admit, I like him alright, but he's not as strong as... The previous, like Brian Dennehy or Stephen Burkoff. I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. <laughs> they marked the de, de de Honge. <clears throat> and yeah, I thought he did alright, but definitely not as memorable as the first and second film. But I thought he did alright. It's either him. Fucking with Troutman, or it's Stallone riding on the horse, getting there, talking to these guys, these guys telling them about that Troutman's in this fort, Rambo wants to go to the fort, they're like, no, we don't want to, and I will admit the acting of the Afghan rebels, the actors did a good job, including this, especially this one guy who tells the story about, you know, why we're so hesitant, that they kill our women who are pregnant so that the next generation doesn't fight them. And the guy delivered the dialogue well. And then you have this sequence where I thought it was pretty cool that 
they invite Rambo to this game where they play on horseback and you got to take uh, an animal and go to put in the circle. And it's Stallone doing it. You can see it's Stallone on a horse, actually riding it. And it's really well done. And then that's when, again, this makes me think of Rambo 4, where the bad guys come in and they wipe everyone out, including women and children. And then that makes you really hate the bad guys. Only Rambo 4 is much more gorier. But this one film is still R-rated. And I thought that was a good action sequence. You've seen people get killed. Men and women get killed. Practical bullet squibs. Stallone is, you know, rambles running. Gets this fucking BDS machine gun. <laughs> blows the shit out of a helicopter. Like, fuck yeah. And I always like that shot afterwards where Rambo's are sitting like this. I remember a long time ago on, I think, my previous channel, I was going to, I had like a little intro that was just that. It was Rambo looking like this, and then looking off to the side where he's kind of like soot, and there's like blats, well, there's smoke all over. I always thought it was a really good shot that he's just looking at all these people who are getting killed and massacred, and even one guy says, you know, where's the honor in this? And the guy goes, you know, this isn't your war. It is now. <clears throat> I guess here I should get into the politics of it, where even on the features, you know, Stallone said it best, which real quick, like, on the features of Rambo 3, uh, the featurette, the making of Rambo 3 that they have, which is called Afghanistan Land Crisis, very disappointing, because... I want to hear about the film. I don't want to hear about Afghanistan and what's going on in Afghanistan. And I hate that kind of fucking special feature shit. I want to hear more of Stallone making the film. You get little teeny bits. And Stallone talking about the release of the film and the bad timing. But I wanted to hear more of that. Not of Afghanistan. So that feature is very disappointing. <clears throat> you know, hear more about Russell Mulcahy. And hear more about this and that. I mean... That'd be nice. <clears throat> but even, you know, Stolen said on there that it's weird when you watch it, the whole thing is flipped. Because in the film, Russia was the bad guy, and we were helping Afghanistan, and now, as people would put it, it's Rambo with the Taliban. <clears throat> and people are like, oh, I can't see the movie now because I watched that. And honestly, first off, yeah, if you put politics in there and it works, great. But at the end of the day, it's got to be an entertaining film. And that's the first and foremost is these films are for entertainment purposes. And I thought this film was an entertaining action film that the core was like the trailer. You know, he's one, he wants to rescue his friend. <clears throat> you know, it was for his country, now it's for his friend. And it was a rescue mission to get his friend. To get Troutman. And that's really, I thought, was the main basis. And granted, it's a miss all going on in Afghanistan, but that was his basis to rescue Troutman. So I just thought of it as a rescue mission. Um, and plus, it was 1988. I mean, if the, if you had the, it's the same film today, the same film made in 2013... Then I can understand what people are like, oh, wow, that's weird, that's weird, huh? But it was 1988. I mean, hell. Imagine making a film in Japan after Pearl Harbor. You couldn't, right? But today they make films in Japan. You have Japanese actors, and you have, you know, all this other stuff. My point being, it's just a matter of timing. Who knows, 20 years from now, people may look at this film and not even think of that at all. Just like if you, like today, if you go see a film and the, and the film's in Japan, or you know, they're work, you're working with Japanese actors in Japan, no one is thinking, wow, that's weird, uh, Pearl Harbor and this stuff. You're not thinking that. There'll be a day where that comes back for this one, Rambo 3, where you know, people are going to be thinking, oh, it's Rambo the Taliban. No, it's Rambo trying to get his friend. 
And this is what was happening at the time. That is history, folks. At the time, Russia was fighting in Afghanistan, and we were helping Afghanistan. That's what it was. You can't blame the film for stuff that was actually happening. And, if, again, if you're really that antsy-pantsy about it, then you think of it as this. Hey, it's Rambo going to get his friend. And you know what? We have the scene where the Russian helicopter killing all these women and children. Hey, I'm fine with the Russian bad guys going down. It's not like every Russian is a bad guy, but these are bad guys who happen to be Russian. Just like when you see a movie, the bad guys happen to be American, happen to be this, happen to be that. It works for the, its story that it's telling. Rambo wanting to get his friend. So, relax is what I'm getting at. And actually, one thing I should mention is that Sheldon Lettich also had a hand in the screenplay. And Sheldon Lettich, if that name sounds familiar, this is the same guy who... Looks like I guess he helped on the screenplay of Bloodsport, but he directed Lionheart, Double Impact, Only the Strong, The Order, worked a lot with John claude Van Damme, and then Only the Strong with uh, Mark Dacascos. He directed that as well. So Sheldon Lettich, he helped on the screenplay with this, which is cool, along with Stallone. And then, I like the bits of humor that Stallone puts in there as Rambo. Again, it's not like a comic app, but like, there's a scene before all this happens where he has this blue light and the guy says, what is that? It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. I thought, I like that. It's simple. It's a little bit. Uh, later on, when Rambo's with Troutman, you know, Rambo goes, well, surrounding them's out. Funny time for humor, John. Or, what do you say? Fuck them. <laughs> or you have the Russian bad guy saying, what's going on? Who is this? Your worst nightmare. I thought it was some memorable badass or good lines. Or a line where, how's the wound, John? You told us the... Uh... Oh, shit, what was the word he said? You told us the... You told us the North pain, right? Is it working? Not really. Like, don't feel bad or something like that. I thought that was pretty funny. I thought it was funny and it worked and it showed that Rambo drew. He wasn't the exact same character, but yeah, it wasn't like he was having a comedic at da 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 da. So I don't get what people's problem with that was. I really don't. But after all that, he decides to go with. The trauma goes to the fort. I like the scene where he's digging for mines. Um, I did not like this little kid that they have in there, which apparently Stallone was and the kid did not get along. <laughs> they on the commentary track. Um, I don't blame Stallone. <laughs> I just I was not a fan of this of this kid. I just don't think you needed a kid in this film. Th thankfully, he's not in it too much to wreck anything, but I don't think you needed, again, I don't think you needed this, the kid in there. I really don't. That's another little problem I have with the film, other than, I think the Jerry Goldsmith score is not as good as the first two films, the villain is not as great, was, I would say it's not as good as the first two films. Um, again, those 20 minutes, right, when Bramble gets to Afghanistan to when he's playing that game with the uh, riding on the horses, a little bit slow, and I didn't care for the little kid. I think you could just let the little kid out, and would have not. It would have been better. But again, so far, I mean, I like Rambo character. I like the little bits of humor Storm puts in there. I thought it was shot well. I thought Peter McDonald did a good enough job. I thought you know, even though I'm not the bit. Jerry Goldsmith's score still works, even though I've heard better. But hey, it's Jerry Goldsmith. The bits of action, like the stick fight, and when he shoots that fucking helicopter down, was exciting. He gets into the 
the fort where Troutman is, and that's when all the action really kicks in. Because the guards get in, again, the stupid fucking kid, maybe that's why he's there. Because of him, Sloan doesn't get trauma out. Throws a knife right into someone's fucking neck. Shoots the shit out of the bad guys. Practical bullet squibs. Da, 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 da. Throws a grenade. People collapse on this fucking little bridge. Gets a fucking rocket launcher. Blows up a truck. Da, 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 da. This big motherfucker shoots at him and he gets this little shrapnel on his side. He's able to get in there. They get in the sewer. He puts like a little bomb. He rise, gets in this little water, rises up, shoots the bad guys, gets out of there, tells the other guys, the kid and this other guy, to get out of there. And then he does something that, granted, it's uh, it's unrealistic, but I still thought it was pretty badass. <laughs> I thought it was well shot, too. I thought it was the effect was good, even though, again, everyone will say it's unrealistic, and they're, they're right. <laughs> again, this is more of a superhero ramble, but I actually like this. I did. Fuck it. That he puts like, uh, I guess like powder, like gunpowder or something on his side. And he does this thing. And you see this flame go through the wound. I mean, it's a wide shot with Stallone. And you see it like right here. Like it'd be exactly like this. And you see the flame like go in through the wound, like cauterizing it. The way that was done, I thought it was really good. I thought it was well done, having Stallone in the same shots, and that wasn't just a close-up. And I thought it was badass. I'm like, I mean, it's, it's unrealistic. It's over the top, you could say, but I really liked it. <laughs> That's where Stallone is going to get Troutman out, gets Troutman out, you know, breaks his motherfucker's net, gunfire... Lots of explosions, gets in a helicopter, shoots the shit out of a tower, they have to land. You have the great scene where him and Trauman are going, tells Trauman to get out of there, gets his bow and arrow. I'm like, yes, yes, the return of the C4 tipped explosive arrows. So badass, and I love this. Sh My favorite shot of the movie is him gearing up. There's a helicopter coming. He rises up. Blows up a fucking helicopter with a C4 tipped explosive arrow. Just go. I just love that. I love that shot. That's such an awesome shot. Practical helicopters. Practical explosions. Not an ounce. Not an inch. Not a milliliter, millimeter, millisecond of CGI. I just, I miss that so fucking much. Because it doesn't take me out of the movie. If I see CGI, it'll take me out of the movie. Because I'm like, oh, it's CGI. But here it's like, yeah, it's Rambo shooting a C4 tip explosive arrow, blowing up a helicopter. Yes, I'm, I'm in. And then he's hunting these guys. He uses those blue lights and his bow and arrows. He's hunting these guys in the caves. He shoots one with a bow and arrow. And they look and they shoot the guy. Breaks the guy's neck. He uses C4 tip explosive arrows to blow blow up a couple guys <laughs> he gets out of there he has a fight with this big Russian guy he will take the fucking grenades pull the pins he have a fuck you kick so the guy like he wraps the rope around the guy then pulls the pins fuck you kick to the guy's face guy falls down gets hung and then blows up. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, that's the way to take out a bad guy. Then they run and they hide in. Stone has his machine gun. That's where he says, fuck them. Shooting them. Has a little grenade launcher. Blowing shit out of trucks. The rebels come. And the ending to this film, to me, is G.I. Joe done the right way. <laughs> you know, it's... I watch his ending... And I only cringe in the fact that this will never happen again. This will never happen again. You have all these people on horses, all these helicopters, all of these tanks, all of these practical military hardware, and a big old epic battle. And Stallone is shooting with machine gun. He gets on a stand and shooting motherfuckers with that. He's throwing Molotov cocktails at tanks. He 
I mean, it's, it's just all the shit that's going on. <laughs> he gets in a tank and has a dog fight with a helicopter, shoots a shallow guy, fuck it, plain chicken with a helicopter and a tank. And yes, I know, that's the question. If the guy's in a helicopter, why doesn't he just fly off and blow the shit out of the tank? I don't know and I don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> I thought it was really cool what they was doing. I did I can let my brain leave the door if I'm having fun. And that's really all I ask for in the movies, to be entertained and fun. And if I pick it apart, that's why. Because I wasn't entertained and I wasn't having fun. So if the movie failed on that, I'm going to pick it apart and don't have no mercy. Because it didn't do its job. I thought Rainbow 3 did its job. And then Stallone and Troutman. I also, that's what I really like. I really like what they did with Richard Trent's character. I like that Troutman sort of became sort of an outsider in the first film. A confidant in the second film. And the third really became his friend. And they were fighting side by side. So you have Troutman actually pwning a few people. And, you know, side by side with Rambo and, and the dirt and the grime. I thought that was really cool. It was really cool to see Richard Trenna back. It was really cool to see what they did with the Troutman character. And so they started to drive off. <clears throat> and Rambo 3... I think some people will be confused. It's like, well, wait a minute, Matt. In First Blood review, you said there was nothing wrong with this. But you said a couple things wrong with this one. So how come you put Rambo 3 above First Blood? Now, granted, First Blood is more of a well-made, like, I can't really say much problems film. At the same time, these kind of action films, like Rambo 2 and 3, are some of my favorite kinds of action films. One Man Army, you could say over-the-top, action-packed, practical action films. You know, First Blood is well-done film, but it's not like it has tons of action. It wasn't meant to be. It's not that kind of movie. It's meant. It's more of a drama. It's a well-done drama. But I'm an action junkie. So I watch Rambo 3. And I think also because Rambo 3, everyone praises First Blood. Deservedly so. But Rambo 3 gets shit on a lot. And I know it's weird, but a lot of times with me, if I see a film that gets a lot of shit... For some reason, it makes me love it more. <laughs> because it's like, I don't think it deserves that much crap. Is it a perfect film? No. Again, some of the stuff I mentioned, I am not. I was not a fan of The Kid. Uh, Jerry Dolsma's score, I would say it's the weakest of the three Rambo films he did. Or even the weakest of all the Rambo films. The villain is not too memorable. But I thought he did fine. I didn't hate him. I thought he did fine enough. He wasn't like Timothy Oliphant in Die Hard 4 or something. I thought the guy did a fine enough job. And in between when Rambo gets in Afghanistan to the, the horse thing. And that's another action scene that really was well done. Is during the ending. You have Ra Stallone. You, it's actually him on a fucking... On a fucking horse with a Molotov cocktail, running straight forward, in, forward to a helicopter, explosion going around, and he falls off the horse. You have shots like that, and that when the Jerry Goldsmith picks up, I'm like, yeah, that really gets me excited. And it's like it's Stone really doing it. It's not a stunt double. For what I understand, Stone did a lot of his own stunts, which was really cool. And. Um, and speaking of Jerry Goldsmith, from what I understand, is that Goldsmith did do a lot of score that wasn't used for the film. I know there's one, I think, called The Bridge that's on YouTube. I only, I'm not even sure if that was used. Or I'm not even sure if that's even Jerry Goldsmith. I know that piece of music wasn't used, I don't believe. I know somewhere online there's a more complete score that Jerry Goldsmith wanted to use. Because I think they did use some pieces of music from Ramble 2. Like when Stallone gets Troutman out and you know stabs the guy in the back, takes his big fucking knife, throws that guy, misses, but then beats the shit out of this guy using his sticks, 
like we saw in the beginning, da da da, and brings it right on the back of the motherfucker's head, and you see like the guy spit out blood. I'm like, ooh, shit. But like I was saying, the little problems I have again, the bad guy, I I was I could deal with him. But now it's memorable it was the first two biker deal with him. I'm always not a fan of the kid. That little 20 minutes I thought was a little bit slow. Um, but other than that, I think it did a lot of things right. Peter McDowell did a fine enough job directing. Stallone, I think, did a good job, as did Richard Crenna and the guys who played the Afghan Afghanistan rebels. I thought the action sequences were big. Explosion filled, practical. I got what I wanted. I got my C4 tape with explosive arrows. I got some really cool, uh, memorable moments like Ramble with the Molotov cocktail or you know the C4 tape explosive arrow to the helicopter. I got my uh, hunting scene with Ramble hunting in the caves. That was a really great sequence. Uh, epic action pat finale with tanks and helicopters and stuff that I'm ne you're never ever, ever going to see again. Because they don't do that shit CGI. I keep harping on that. And yes, I know that's how it is. That's why I'm saying you're never going to see that again. Because that's the day we live in. The day and age we live in. And I look back on this film like, but this just looks so much better than they did in this film. It looks so much better. And they're not going to do it. And it's where the Guinness Book of World Records around this time, I think 1990 actually, said this was like the most violent film ever made. Of course, that's been surpassed. But, and also uh, Hot Shots Part 2, which I actually like Hot Shots Part 2, or Part 2. Parodied Rambo, but this was the specific film it parodied the most, was Rambo 3. Especially the, the stick fighting and stuff. But I really enjoy that film. But the action scenes are really good. I like the little bits of humor Rambo put. Rambo said, "I don't think it was that bad." I thought they were actually memorable lines. You know, your worst nightmare, or even what Trotman said. Does this man think he is God? God would have mercy. He won't. I thought it was some memorable lines of dialogue. I thought Stallone and Richard Crane did a good job. I thought, yeah, planful acting sequences. I thought it was well shot. That was well edited. I thought it ended things on a good note. I never thought this was a bad film. I do think it's an underrated film. It's a 5.4 out of 10 IMDb. Fucking Razzies. Stolen one for worst actor. Really? This was the worst actor? And it was nominated for worst screenplay. Worst supporting actor. Richard Trenna. Really? Razzies. Richard Trenner nominated for Worst Supporting Actor. Fuck yourself, Razzies. And then Worst Film? Worst Director? This was nominated for the Worst Film of the Year. And the Worst Director of the Year. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you out of your fucking mind with this shit? Are you kidding me? Seriously? Right, I mean, I want to see something real quick. Fuck it, I'm gonna since I can go on, I'm gonna see something right now, cause this is this is really pissing me off. Because this film does not deserve to be nominated for the worst fucking movie of the year. If you wonder what I'm doing, I'm looking up the Razzie Awards. And I'm looking up the fucking year, if it lets me. <clears throat> Probably would have been 1989, right? Because I don't know if it's the year. 1988, let's do that. <clears throat> Ramble 3, Mac and Me, Hot to Trot, Cash at 2, and Cocktail. So... This is, again, this is why I even enjoy this movie more so. Because this is a damn good action film. I would put this action film above a lot of action films today for badassness. It's actually R-rated. Doesn't pussyfoot around with that. It has bad guys you want to hate. Has a good guy that's total badass. 
has really well done action sequences and pyrotechnics and uh, action sequences involving the bow and arrow C4, the hunting sequences, the tanks, helicopters, you have the prison escape scene, you have the first scene where Rambo gets that big ass machine gun. I think it was well directed, especially for a guy who didn't have much preparation. I mean, the little problems I had are like little nitpicky problems. It was nothing that bad. And you want to put in the same as Mac and me? You want to put in the same category as Mac and me? That's what I mean. This film doesn't get respect from anybody. That's what pisses me off. Rainbow 3 is one of the worst films. With Mac and me. Let's see, what else was in 1988? I really want to see what else was in 1988. That they had to pick Rambo 3 to be with Mac and me. Big Top Pee Wee, yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah. Or Bulletproof with Gary Busey. Yeah. Cocoon the Return. It was a shitty sequel. That just dumbfounds me. Really, really dumbfounds me. See, so you had Iron Eagle 2. You had... I'm just going through this as quick as I can so that I'm not silent for so long. My stepmother is an alien. So I guess that's better than Rambo 3. Poltergeist 3! Yeah, Poltergeist 3 is better than Rambo 3, I guess. Because Rambo 3 got nominated, but not Poltergeist 3. Nope, not Poltergeist 3. Nope. But Rambo 3 had to. So I guess, yeah, I guess Poltergeist 3 is better than Rambo 3. Hell! I've never been a fan of Tequila Sunrise, and I think Ramble 3 is better than Tequila Sunrise. I'm sorry. Young Einstein? With Yahoo Serious? Yeah! Fucking Young Einstein! That is the past, but not fucking Ramble 3. Fucking Police Academy 5! Came out the same year. Fucking Police Academy 5 came out the same year. And Poltergeist 3 came out the same year. Arthur 2 on the rocks. Same year. For fuck's sake. Uh, fucking Moonwalker came out the same damn year. Fucking... Ugh. Unfucking believable, man. Unbelievable. You tell me that Police Academy 5 and Poltergeist 3 months on that shit. Oh, that's fine. But Ramble 3, man, fuck that. Uh, Stallone, he won as the worst actor. And Ramble 3 is one of the worst films of the year. And now when he wrote fucking Richard Trenna for worst point actor. Uh, oh my god, man. That, that's what makes me love Rainbow 3 more. Cause, I mean, that's how big of a fan I am. I even love the teaser for Rainbow 3. If you look up the teaser, it's just, you see a knife go across the screen, about, about this big, go across the screen. And in the knife, you see images from Rainbow 3. As it talks, you see like one knife go down. Then a second knife. Then a third knife. Then Rambo 3. And it did. came out on my birthday. May 25th of 1988. I just... Rambo 3... I know I've gone on for like 40 minutes. I don't know if anyone will even watch the entire fucking video. But I just feel Rambo 3... It has little problems. But I still think it's a very entertaining action film 
It's big. It's explosive. It's got what you want in an action film. Stallone, I think, does a good job. Richard Trenda does a good job. If you're really that gun ho about the politics, I just think of it as a rescue mission. Again, it was 1988 for crying out loud. Get over it. For fuck's sake, get over it or something. And it'd be nice to have an actual documentary about the actual making of Rambo 3. That'd be nice. But either way, I don't know what more I can say about Rambo 3. I went on and on. I really feel this is an underrated action film. I think it's shit on a lot. I don't think it deserves that much shit. There are dozens and dozens of action films that get the pass. Machete gets the pass. Predators gets the pass. Rainbow 3 kissed the shit out of Predators and Machete. And Avatar. I'm sorry. Rainbow 3 has more going for it. Just the ending alone of Rainbow 3 has more going for it. The ending of Rainbow 3 has more action than the entire film of Predators. And the entire film of Machete. People want to talk about how epic Avatar is with its ending? I'm like, fuck that. I already watched the ending of Rainbow 3. And they did it all practical. That's a whole war going on practically. <laughs> real horses, real explosions, real blood. Because I could guarantee Stone got hurt doing that. I know there's a shot where the helicopter goes by him. It was like six inches away from his head. <laughs> Fuck up taints with Molotov cocktails and... Anyway, I'm a big Rambo fan. I really love Rambo 3. So either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you later.